Okay, hi everyone. Welcome back to Anita's Joint. Hashtag is the joint where every day is payday, baby. You're tuned in to another esoteric football commentary with your girl, Anita Flying High. So today we're going to be tuning in to a friendly uh, which featured Belgium and the Netherlands. Um, of course, Netherlands are Euro champions, but they will be in the uh, group with America. Uh, I mean, with USA, um, Vietnam, and um, Portugal. We saw Portugal, so we're going to tune into the Netherlands. And I do believe Vietnam actually played Spain, so it'd be really nice to look into that match too, just to see how, you know, they played, how they played against Spain. Um, and uh, But yeah, you know, Netherlands, this is their send-off match. It's very beautiful. Um... Netherlands, I, I enjoy their, um, I like the, first of all, their lionesses too, just like, um, the, just like England, their lions, lionesses, and their orange, orange is my favorite, color. orange is my favorite color, so I mean, that's real nice, that's real nice, but, uh, I was looking at, um, of course, um, this, this, this um this uh I should say yes this stream or this video had the World Cup roster and I expected to I thought I saw Kinakama on it but apparently I didn't and I don't know like she scored 30 goals in back-to-back -back seasons for her club. Now she's going to Wolfsburg. But I'm not too sure. We'll see, I guess, when we watch the Netherlands, just to make sure. I can always look back and see. But it's tough. It's like, damn, you scored 30 goals back-to-back -back seasons in your league, and you may not go to the World Cup? Man, it's tough. It's tough. But anyways, I think she is featured on this um, the substitute bench here. Um... They don't show us the subs um, when they're going to show us the lineups and everything. But um, of course, now, if you don't know, Man City have now signed Jill Ron. And I'm super excited uh, to see Jill in City Blue. But of course, you know, Jackie and Martins play for PSG. And, you know, we tuned into them a lot. I think Jackie had a really great season uh, with Paris. Martins uh, was a little different. She came off the bench a lot more than I expected early in the PSG season. But I think she'll have a lot more inf influential role next season. Um, hopefully Marie is able to come back from PSG. Um, but uh, Diani may be leaving PSG. There's still going to be a, a good core for PSG. But we're talking about the Netherlands and Belgium. I don't think Belgium are in the World Cup. Um, we saw a lot of Belgium. They ha they played a little, a lot of like little tournaments here and there. But um, you know they have Cayman from Lyon. You know they have. Um, I don't see her um, here, but they got some talent. It's just you know there's there's, there's a national team that that still needs some more growth. They still need some more time. And you may know you may know more Belgian players uh, than I do. But um, hopefully, like I said, as they continue, as we continue to evolve, they'll be able to have those players come through to represent um, Belgium. Because, you know, on the men's side, um, they got Lukaku and De Borne and um, really fabulous players. Uh, so eventually we'll triple over to the ladies side as well. Um, I think they I'm pretty sure they have a league of their own in Belgium, but I know that the Dutch do as well. Uh, so um, like I said, I uh, so I came across a couple articles. Um, I think Mark Sintel is talking to the media about you know her her belief in how Netherlands can perform. Um, I watched a lot of what who did, I'm trying to think who did I watch a lot more of when it comes to this Netherlands teams. I feel like I did watch more PSG. I didn't really watch Lyon like that, but I did. I I guess I guess I watched. PSG and Lyon more when you think about this team, Netherlands team. Um, 
Some of their key players are either playing in France or in Germany. Uh, Bernstein and Jill were playing in Germany for Wolfsburg and Bayern Munich. And of course, uh, some other players, if, um, but those are the names that come to mind immediately. Like I know they were playing in Germany. I know they were playing in France. Um, but, uh, you know, and they have a, a really good team. Uh, I feel like I'm trying to figure out what happened at the Euros for the Netherlands. They had Miedema go down, which is a big loss. So here's the lineup. And I think this probably would be uh, maybe their lineup for the, the opening match against Portugal. I think Victoria just signed, number 24 just signed with Arsenal last year. Or this year, uh, Spitz van de Gant Jensen, I believe, plays for Wolfsburg. Um, because Van de Donk, uh, Jackie, and Jill, uh, we know those players. Berenstein, Martens, uh, very uh, known in, in the collective. And like I said, this is Belgium's lineup. Uh, you see Cayman playing a fullback. Some of the names come to me, but. It's very difficult. I don't know where they play specifically. There was a article that I came across. Well, not really article, but a website article that they had a lot of the the teams that released their World Cup rosters, and they showed them where they played uh, domestically. So that was a great uh, insight. But I haven't really looked at it in a while. So I mean, you know, it's all about the players uh, and the team uh, having a good match. Um, Getting ready for the World Cup. What are we? Um, let me see. Uh, I need to change. We are seven days away from the World Cup in Australia and New Zealand, and um, should be what's like I said, like a fabulous tournament for everyone um, uh, that to, that's going to be participating and observing um, for the women's game. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see Netherlands. I like the team they have right here. I like, you know, Netherlands. They've they've won it, right? They've won it. They've won it. Um, the Euros. No, they have a new manager. You know, Serena has jumped ship to England. But you know, you you can't you can't. Um, that sucks. They couldn't keep her. But um, it's their time. You know, to 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 show their maturity, show their growth after the Euros to see how. Uh, you know, think about what Netherlands had did, you know, um, Euro winner, World Cup runner up. And I forgot what happened at the uh, Euros this time. But of course they lost, but um, they didn't uh, make it. I'm, I'm pretty sure they made it past the quarterfinals or something like that. Uh, who was it? It was like uh, in the quarterfinals, it was like Germany, France and England and Sweden. Right. So they, they yeah, they probably lost in the quarterfinals, Netherlands, I would think. Um And I'm not too sure what they're ranked, but well, I guess I can look into it as more. But um, hopefully we have a good match and some goals. Like I said, we we watched, um, who do we watch? England and Portugal, right? And uh, like, like we did in the Euros, tuning into the ladies before the big tournament. Just to see how, what players are performing now. Because the ma this match was on the second. So, of course, it's been a couple days, or at least we say a week. Um... But we want to know, we know that, like, like I said, every team has stars, especially going to the, the teams that are going to the World Cup. All, we know a lot of these ladies. We know what we've seen, what they've done. And this, and because the, the major tournaments have been back to back to back to back, we're seeing the ones that are living up to these big tournaments, living up to their name, living up to their quality on the field. And Netherlands, y'all are one of the teams that I really want. I hope y'all do well you know what I'm saying of course now because uh, uh, I gotta we got more more family more football family in the Netherlands team with Jill now coming to uh, to city uh, but anyways uh, the match kicked off let's go let me just uh, make this big for me they have uh, they had a really nice setup for the Netherlands um, the good um, what do you say um, pre-game and uh, they had a lot of good stuff. Of course, they were speaking in Dutch, so, you know, got the audio, <laughs> but uh, I guess I could turn it up a little bit. Let me see something. They got there speaking in Dutch. Yeah. 
But yeah, I think this midfield is really nice for the Netherlands. You have Jackie, you have Jill, and you have now you have, uh, of course, Van der Donk. It might have been, always been this midfield for the Netherlands. And now I'm just a little bit more invested uh, because of the players uh, that have made their moves. But Bernstein, I know she had a really good season uh, for Bayern Munich, really pacey player. Um, at the, in the Champions League, I think she she was scoring goals. Um, and I watched, even though Bayern Munich went down to Arsenal, she still was a very very influential role uh, for Bayern Munich. They ended up winning the title, right? Bayern Munich uh, over Wolfsburg. So um, Leon, uh, of course, won the title. Uh, I'm not too sure who their manager is. I think it's a gentleman. Um, the girl Kirsten, Kirsten, the city lady. Okay, I guess, I guess, I guess, I can't forget about Kirsten. She does play for City as well. So we have two Dutch citizens and two Dutch P PSG players. Oh, good strike! Oh, it's a goal. Yeah, Martins. Already, ah man, Belgium, come on, Belgium. Y'all conceding already? She tried to save it. Well, first minute, second minute, Martins, I feel like Martins is a what? To me, after she left Barcelona, Martins gives me a different, she's a different type of, a different profile player, I guess, you know? Um, but this is a good ball. This is Van der Donk on the flank. I'm uh, just pushing it back inside the box, and Martins, inside the box, just squares it. Good finish, good finish. Goalkeeper tried to get it, but it's a good finish. Early, early in the match, you know. Put, uh, so that's that's tough. <laughs> Martins and Van der Donk combining. Uh, so you know that's that's good. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I think this midfield is pretty good for uh, Netherlands. And I think, uh, I, I do think they will challenge this American team. Um, hopefully, I would like them to challenge America for that top, for that top uh, spot. Because this team right here, uh, even though we've only seen three minutes and... Um, Without Minama, you know, I still think they're still a good side, uh, in my opinion. And they've already built the currency of being champions. And they probably just have strengthened uh, their team. And they're definitely going to have to strengthen their team because, uh, I mean, if Minama was in this lineup, I mean, you we would know, like, listen, this was the World Cup final in 2019, Netherlands and America. And when I was thinking about that match, I'm like, I don't know how the Netherlands didn't beat America. Because I think they had a penalty and, and, and someone missed. And um, I just... That would have been fitting. That would have made sense. Because when you watch that match, you're like, what? How did they not beat America? Um, and I feel they really got... America really got lucky. Because that Netherlands team was really good. Um, they, that the one that they played in the final, um, and America, you know, like I said, got really lucky. America, I feel, had a lot of more of the outside um, influence, but anyways, I, that's the past, whatever. Uh, but yeah, if you watch that match, I think I watched that match on Twitch, or I don't know where I watched that match, but bro, that was crazy. That was a you go. You watch that Netherlands America match. You'll see what I mean. You'll see what I mean. You'll see what I mean. Um. All right, all right, all right. And like I said, the orange does it for me because you know Houston Dash on my team. So, uh, I'm only now. Uh, it's funny that or I'm only attracting more Dutch players too. And I feel like for me, uh, so now that I understand like how. I'm understanding more how reality works. Um, I've been telling you, you know, um, well, what I like and what I would like to observe and what I would like to experience is um, the teams that I support domestically to have um, national team players from all over the world. I would like, you look at some of the best teams, they have some of the best players uh, around the world 
not just in one national team, right? Because that's you. We will no longer see teams like that anymore because it's just not sustainable for a domestic club, and so you just have to have um, different types of players from different countries and see how they all combine together for a team. And I think it brings that does bring the it brings a different type of team to us as the observers and that's what i, I like i like that um even with uh, when we think about uh, i guess we're not watching brazil but we'll just talk about jack jill jill coming back to england for city uh now we have some more dutch players we already had one but now we have one more you know uh we have some australian players we have some uh, uh english players Got some Swedish players. Like, that is, I feel like for my team, we need to, especially City, you know, you need to go out there, see if you can find a French player, see if you can go find a, um, uh, and depend, depending on what kind of player you want, these certain countries, they, like, if you say, we'll use Spain, for example, because they're one of the easiest. Spain are, are known, or just in the country, are known for possession so if you want a midfielder why don't you go seek a player in spain because technically they will be good based upon how we see them play based upon how they're being brought up in their systems this is something that we see that they focus on um ball t ball possession being able to be good with the ball and of course other countries have that um but when we talk about some of the best we can look at Spain um, as a as a role, as a role model, or just an example. And um, when you think about maybe attacking fullbacks, I see France as one of the clubs or just one of the countries that has really good attacking fullbacks. Um, on Lyon and for Paris, uh, and it is crazy. It's not crazy, but you see. Ellie Carpenter is one of those fullbacks. She's not French, but she's a one of a kind in Australia. So Australia, you maybe have your one of a kind gyms, like your Sam Kerr's, because Australia are so. Not all countries have a certain system that they focus on on the development of the the women's game or the development of the the players going through the camps. Uh, so, like in America too, you know, you you. I, right now, I feel like America has a lot of pace. If you want a pacey striker, maybe you should go search for an American. Um, and stuff like that. So we start, to, maybe if you want a, a, play, a player that's creative and likes to play on the ball, you may want to go search for a player in Brazil. Um, those types of attributes, you know. If you want to, like, um, I would say, like, Germany gives us the, the individuality of players that are hardened. Uh, they they're not really gonna give you that much flair because I really, when I look at Germany I don't really I haven't seen uh, like okay we can take um what's her name o Orderdorf from Wolfsburg if you want a solid strong midfielder maybe you should go to Germany and look for a player like her um, but you I think you understand where I'm coming from when it comes to that so. And like I said, not all the countries, um, all the countries have players like that. But some geographical locations are better suited. They have better developed those players for that position. You know, like even though Spain, we'll use we'll use it on the on the other side. Even though Spain are known for their midfield, they lack an attack, right? So they don't they don't focus too much on attack. Um, Based upon what we have heard in the collective, they don't focus too much on attack. Uh, Brazil maybe has been known to not focus too much on defense. It's all about attack. So you see the polarities and the development of the ladies game in, in their youth and what they focus on, what they don't really too much focus on, and how you can implement that in your team domestically and, and bring it together. And you have, of course, your aces in the, in the places. Uh, you know okay Berenstein she's getting a lot of uh, good balls over the top to run in behind uh, Von Dogs here ooh that one saved she didn't latch onto the first one the first time but it's still 
Oof. Good strike on target. That's why. Uh, I think Vandedunk, did she score the winner in, against Paris, I believe? Um, but yeah, she's, uh, we, we saw Vandedunk with Arsenal, now she's with Lyon. You know, anytime, I'm, I'm, it's all about, when, you, when, when we look at players that go to big clubs, it's not a, I'm not, you don't discredit what they win, but you have to more focus on how they played because think about Lyon and Paris they're the they're the, the best teams where they are and even though Jackie and uh always said we're gonna go back to Lyon uh and Haran and stuff like that they went to Lyon and they won everything again so it's based upon how Okay, how did you play during that title run? Were you like, you know, did you play well? Did you, did you, how much contribution did you do to the team during your success? You know, because Lyon are known for winning, you know, and it's the same thing with different clubs that are not um, deep when it comes to, or di different, it's the same thing with different leagues when they're not deep when it comes to, um, they don't have that many teams competing for trophies because they just don't have the players. Um, they have not developed the pipeline. They have not developed the system to attract certain players. And a lot of, um, of course the game will be changing and we will, we will see how the players, the young ladies come through and how they, um, how they will show us what they feel about the game. Because we have to see it, we see it, the game through their eyes as a, as, I don't know, I guess they're looking for a, a handball here. Um, they will let us know what the next, in a way, the next... How the, I just enjoy how they view the game as young ladies coming through. Because they're only getting younger and younger. Uh, not younger and younger, but Italy. I, I want to see Italy. Italy, they have like three teenagers, apparently, that are coming through. That are in the... Um, it's a penalty for um, Netherlands. Ah, it's unfortunate for Belgium. You, you could get scored on again right here. Final first first. Uh, this is this is uh, so Berenstein once again getting active. This is uh, the Van der Donk. So it's a penalty. Who's? I think this is a uh, spite spites. No, oh, no, it's not her. That's wrong. I'm wrong. This is uh, Van der Yet. All right. I think she's the uh, one of the center backs for Netherlands. Probably an OG. Who called her? Anyways. I mean, going up two goals in 14 minutes, I mean, uh, I guess you would say perfect start if Netherlands can uh, finish. Let's see. Ooh, it's saved. Mm, she went the right way. Good save from the goalkeeper. Those are tough, man. Miss penalty, or just say save penalty. Good hands. From number one, e Ibard. All right. Well, Netherlands. Eh, she may look, look, a little. You gotta be careful. You gotta make those. Um, but interesting. The center. Back, she's the free, she's the uh, penalty taker, right? <clears throat> uh, the referee. It's a low low cross. A very low cross. Um, but you saw the bench. They have Van der Sanden. They have a. Uh, of course, uh, uh, some more attacking options. And she's over in England now. I think she plays for Liverpool. Uh, after, after leaving Lyon. Um, but yeah, I'm not too sure how... Uh, it's a good ball here. Who is number 17? So when I wrote down the lineups, like I don't even have number seventeen out here. Who is she? Oh, this might is this. 
I don't know who this is, but um, I just have to get a close up because I don't have her. When I I wrote the lineups yesterday, uh, I'm looking. I'm like I don't even see her on here. All right, Netherlands. I mean, not another Belgium. It's a little good stuff in the midfield. They called a foul right there in that collision, maybe. I was Cayman's cross. She put it into a a dangerous area, a dangerous area. And, uh, Blom. Well, I think that that get, that um, of course the save definitely uh, transmute good energy to Belgium to be able to uh, continue to have that fighting spirit. Like, okay, we're not down. Let's go forward. Uh, goalkeeper did her job and she saved it, thankfully. But they need some more players on attack. You see, um, just one player going against all the Dutch players. Number thirteen. Uh, For some reason, I want to say number 14 is Pilova, but I have her down as 24, so maybe she, maybe I was tripping on the numbers or something. But I'm thinking she plays as, um, I, like I said, I didn't watch Arsenal that much, but I'm pretty sure it looks like she plays as a, um, a wing. Right now she's playing uh, like in the midfield. Or a high, uh, like an attacking fullback, maybe? But it looks like she's playing in the midfield, but just out wide. I think Jensen and uh, number three have been uh, at the, the center back partnership for a minute. All right. Got some new faces, faces I ain't never seen before for Netherlands, and that's what's so great um, about just watching football in general. <clears throat> you get to know some of the faces that you never seen, uh, and then, then like I say, they get the ability to showcase their talent, and you as the observer get to be the uh, because depending on what type of footballer or what type of what do you look for and what your eyes get attracted to when it comes to the type of baller that you enjoy? Um, you have a plethora, you have a wide variety of uh, players to be able to look at. Um, and, and that's just in life in general. Uh, but when it comes to the game of football, um, what do you like to see on the field? What do you like to see in a player? Um, or what... You know, so like I said, we always look for. Sometimes I look for uh, the players that I'd, not not the players I never seen before, but like the players I never seen do something that I see most of the other players do, right? Um, and it has to be consistently. So I have to tune into them more consistently just to see if this is just a one-time game or this is what they do all the time, you know. Uh, and so that's why it helps to know where they play domestically, but. When we have major tournaments, we do get a look in. Um, and you look at the starting eleven. You look at the the faces that are not as well known, and you look at okay, why are they starting over uh, their play, the other players, and uh, what do they bring to the team that helps uh, them? Like what, what what attributes do they bring to the team? Because they're starting for a reason, right? Most of the time. <laughs> most of the time and a great crowd here um in the netherlands it looks like a, a sold out stadium uh for their their send-off match and and like i said netherlands have to have high spirits for this uh Van waar zoveel om te doen is geweest. 
De FIFA heeft daar uh, voor het vrouwen maar sowieso een stokje voor gestoken. Er zijn acht banden ontwikkeld maar liefst. En daar mogen de aanvoersters van alle landen uitkiezen. Dat is ook in samenspraak met de aanvoersters. I'm trying to think, were Belgium in the Euros? Um, if they were, um, I don't think they got out the group stage. That's for sure. Zo zou je dus ook nog kunnen variëren tijdens het WK. I think they played France. I think that was their best match. Yeah, I remember. I remember. The, the, the Netherlands were in the Netherlands. Belgium were in the, um, I believe, the Euros. I remember that, that match they played against France. I think they ended up scoring against France. Um, and I, I remember watching. I was like, um, of course, they have their captain is technically not here. Um, she used to play for City. Warlord? Uh, um, but. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like they have. Well, then again, she was isn't getting older. She's an older player, but um, yeah, they gave France a little a tougher task than I expected, and I thought that they showed a lot of uh, their heart. Um, it was gonna be tough to beat France, but the fact that you get a goal, uh, it just shows you know you the belief that you have the ability to win. Uh, but um. Still need some more time, right? A little bit more time. It's the snelle tick van Pelova. Viltjens. Wel verlies van Van Havermaat. Now, I don't want to be biased, but <laughs> I feel Jackie probably of all the people and maybe some others, but she's the one that I watch the most. And when I think about Jackie and Martins, I think Jackie had a hell of a season with Paris. Ah, she's very, 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 I think she's a, what do you call it? A box to box player. Um, she can attack. Uh, and I feel, ooh, Bernstein goes down. The penalty, another one. We'll see if the same person takes this one. Bernstein, she probably has, if, if I watched Bar Mute more, she probably like, looks, I, I had a hell of a season too, Nina. So she probably did. Um, uh, she probably did have a great season, but she's definitely got a lot more, um, I don't know, just over these last year. She probably was always the baller that she is now, but um, definitely, if you don't know about Bernstein, you, you, you have to now. <laughs> She's a, a very, I would say, very pacey uh, fullback. Very good, fast, and and strong. Um, kind of like Van der but maybe a little quicker. So, uh, very strong attackers. I mean, when you, think, when you think about the Dutch, you're like, damn, the Dutch have the ability to... And you want, what kind of player do you want from the Netherlands? You know, What are you looking for? I mean, they have the GOAT. One of the goats, Miedema. I mean, and so you're like, they have maybe Netherlands. If you need an attacker, you go, you go to the Netherlands. You need a, a, a out and out striker or a wide player. You, you may need to go to the Netherlands to see who they have out there. I mean, Kim Nakama scored 30 goals for fuck's sakes in back to back seasons. I don't know. I, I, I don't know another player that I have seen done that. And I didn't even watch her. And I know that people say, well, I don't know what people will say about the Dutch League, but 30 goals in back-to-back -back seasons, that's impressive to me as an individual um, because you have to do it again. That's 60 goals. And I don't know sure how many matches they play, but and she's not even starting. I don't even know where she's at. But we're hopefully, if I tune into, I should be able to tune into Wolfsburg. They play her with Payor and, and Pop and, you know, Hudson. They have a lot of good players. Wolfsburg. Different, a different goal scorer. I mean, a different striker. Or it's another center back or midfielder. But it was a different penalty taker. Spikes. See, this was the first. This is who I thought, oh, girl. Now I thought, when I said Spike the first time, that's who I expected to see take the penalty. But now she takes the second one. And this one gets put away. Uh... Uh, goalkeeper goes the wrong way. It's tough. So two penalties here. One saved, one given. I mean, one saved, one scored. 
Netherlands three chances and they've they converted to uh, so so far so good it's not in the run of play which is tough and if you're Belgium you're like you know you rather I rather a team score in the run of play than a penalty in my opinion but that doesn't I'm not it does not give me um it, it does not let make me discredit what the Netherlands have done uh, because you can't help that they, she fouled you in the box you can't help that. You're like, neither we were trying to score and run a play, but she fouled me. So you're like, well, in that instance, you score the penalty, right? Uh, so, uh, what was it? Spitis? Sp Sp she gets the penalty. It's 2 0. Netherlands, right? And this is um, number three. All right, so uh, we got the two different scores. Martins opened up. Um, luckily, it's not 3-0 because I've been tough. <laughs> uh, but the two goals here. Belgium, we need some reactions. We need some responses. We need to see how y'all going to possess a little bit more. I think when it comes to teams, um, when, they get, when they go down, right, I think you must hold the ball, right? I think you must hold the ball and keep it away from the other team because that is the best way to not get scored on, right? And as much as you want to quickly try to get back a goal, that could be to your detriment, right? So I feel, because we're talking about tactics and but you, when we talk about tactics, we, we, talk, we think about how, how can, what's the best reaction after going down a goal? Um, and what what do the teams have in their game plan if that happens, right? And like I said, Belgium are are not um, the um, the best team, um, you know. Unfortunately, and they're coming against the Euro champ, well, former Euro champions, yeah, former World Cup runner-ups. I'm not too sure how far Belgium have been in when it comes to major tournaments um, over the last years, but I know Olymp I know the World Cup and the Euros. I'm pretty sure they didn't. Always that, always another player on the ball, like just immediately. And it looks for uh, Netherlands. Yeah, I think they're going to give America a tough time. The Netherlands have moved the ball um, very well, uh, and I this Jill, she's you see what she was going for. Um, they have moved it really well, and I think similar similar to England, um, well well seasoned players, uh, players that played in England, so we saw a lot of them, uh, well seasoned. Uh, they are the right age group because I'm. Uh, a lot of these ladies either are like two years younger than me or like we're the same age, you know. So I, I mean, I'm grateful to, uh, in a way, to be in the same age group as these, some of these ladies, right? And and they're not they're not, they're not that much younger than me and they're not that much older than me either. So I'm like in the perfect age range. Um, to see them in their prime, right? And it's beautiful to see and to witness because I'm in my, you know, I'm like I'm in my prime too, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's great to be able to observe greatness, as we say. But yes, in general, when it comes to football, um, I think Netherlands, their players have experienced enough travel, enough football, um, enough experience. Now they're they're already been champions, right? To 
when it comes to is this Dutch side more or even just as mm, seasoned as some of the American as the America because we're you know Netherlands play America in the second group second stage I mean the second match of the group and Netherlands of course didn't win a World Cup but they did face America the Euros I mean the and they didn't win the World Cup but they did face America at the final and you look at the pair the players that departed from that USA team and this USA team that they're bringing here oh um experience wise do they actually match America now with their players and all the youth players for America and experience of a lot of players having their first World Cups uh I think when when those two when those two come together I kind of give the Netherlands a slight advantage even though they are missing meet them up and they would even have a more advantage if they had meet them up in my opinion but um I still kind of give them that advantage uh based upon uh, look at their midfield who who is in our America's midfield we're unsure about the injuries when it comes to Rose Lavelle and and even Julie Ertz but you see Netherlands midfield with Jill Von der Donk and Jack like you see their midfield like you're like well their seasons then we know what they're all about we may uh, like America who's your midfield that we may see we're gonna see Haran we, we don't really technically know America starting uh midfield right now as in my opinion I think like I said I already when I saw this lineup I think this is the lineup they'll have versus Portugal in my opinion maybe some tweaks but I think this is a strong lineup, even though I haven't seen the Netherlands play in a while. It feels probably the last time I watched them play was in the Euros. Um, but um, it, it's not. We know this tournament is not going to be easy for any team that wins. I think eventually, maybe your group may not be as tough, but that quarterfinal match is going to be tough. Whoever you have to face. Um, I think it's going to be tough, um, in my, in, in Berenstein, good shots here, just, just very good moves, I mean, Bayern, Bayern Munich, uh, Netherlands are moving Belgium like an instrument, you know, <laughs> in my opinion, uh, um, they're getting shots off, and they're patient, they're patient, I don't feel like, the, I don't feel rushed at all watching the Netherlands, they're just, you know, playing their game, and, um, and it's nice to play at home as well, uh, and so and, and thanks Nether and thanks for Belgium for playing them. I'm not too sure is Netherlands and Belgium close or something, because sometimes I wonder like, you know, you can only face. That's what they say. You can only play who's in front of you, and everyone else has um, probably their send off match. Uh, so I'm, I want to know if Belgium, uh, they're if they're close to the Netherlands maybe. Uh, Yeah, like I said, for the for Belgium, it's all about you know keeping possession. You saw the ball go back to the fullback when she immediately bombed it. I mean, she was looking for a player, but she immediately just let it rip and gave Belgium ball Bel and gave Netherlands back the ball. Um, I feel like when you do hold the ball, you make the other team react, and then when you have the other team reacting, you. you you can use that uh, to your advantage, right? Uh, but depending on how the team reacts, they, they, if they react, you know, precisely, you could be put in a dangerous position. But then that's that's when um, we may see the individuality come out. In some players we need to see we may need to see some some magic um, to be able to get out of that pressure based upon the reaction of of the teams holding the ball and thinking about okay, what can we do to move up the field. And um, here's Jill here. And I think uh, a lot of good movements. We got a lot of options. Netherlands. Uh, everyone I feel has. I feel based upon watching this Netherlands, everyone is open to helping create. Everyone has. Um, everyone ha I feel everyone has the confidence in each other to like listen. You have the ability to create something for us. That's how I feel when I watch the Netherlands right now. 
Um, I don't see anyone that is timid on the ball and wanting to help build the team up. To me, everyone seems very confident. Everyone seems um, up for it. Um, and of course, like I said, being at home, being two up, I mean, it's a perfect match. Uh, if you're the Netherlands to send off uh, in a, it's a, it's a heavy collision here. Hopefully she's okay. Yeah, so number 17 is uh, Polova. I had, to, I had her as number uh, 24. That's, that's why. So glad we got that close up right there. Not too much pressure from Belgium either when mm, when the when the Netherlands move the ball. Not that much pressure. They 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 are giving them a lot windows. Um, that's a good ball back from. Oh my goodness! That's a beautiful setup. That's a beautiful goal, man. That ball laid back immediately to Bernstein. I think I'm not too sure it was either Von Dock or Jackie. But just lovely. Really good. Methodical. Listen, when I played, um let me let me get the replay. But very beautiful finish from Bernstein. I she's definitely a player to watch if you're the Netherlands or just in general. If for the Netherlands. Uh yeah, so Bernstein either this came off the deflection, but that touch that's that's Martins over there. Yeah, what a finish. So she gets the header kind of up, Martins tests it, and then passes it right back. Bernstein puts it to her left. And just cool, fin cool finish. I do think the goalkeeper may be a little undersized nowadays. But still, she put it in a position where the goalkeeper wasn't going to make it. Um, so looks like Bernstein and Martins have really good chemistry um what you like what you want to see and man teams are so lucky Minamo is not here um teams are so lucky so lucky so lucky because this Netherlands team they look real good um uh, they look better than England even though the England played Portugal are Belgium better than Portugal let me know let me know are Belgium better than Portugal based upon what you saw to and they faced England in England and they got a draw out or did England just not play to their potential because in a way when I watched Portugal in England it should have been similar to this scoreline England should have been up with all those chances that they created so what went wrong with England or what did Portugal do right let me know let me know you know what I'm saying because I didn't expect England to perform the way they did um you know, and, and, and like I said, it, maybe Portugal are a better side than Belgium. Let me know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I think that was what, like a 38 minute Bernstein here. Three goals uh, for the Netherlands. And this was assist from, from Martins, right? A very lovely fit. So Bernstein got in the air. She's not a tall player, y'all. She's not a big player. Um, but she got up there, and I think it went off her head uh, to get it, or shoulder or something. And she got it to Jackie, and Jackie, not Jackie, Martins. And Martins, the vision, the accuracy to just immediately see Bernstein, I guess, drop back a little further into the box after she got in the air. Um, and give her the ball back and let her uh, go for goal. Um unselfish and, and like i said i think martins um I mean, she's a world she's a world cup she's a champions league winner with barcelona a euro winner she's and like i said i feel it was so crazy i didn't expect her you know of all the teams she could have gone to she came to paris right and um you know i think i i, I like i said i raved about that because i mean what 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 teams were warning Martins, right? What team I think any team could have used her. But what team um Oh man. Good ball in. Had two players. Um 
what teams vibe for her and why France? Was Jackie already making her move to France? That makes me wonder, you know. But in general, um, I think, of course, Martins is older than Miedema. Um but and she plays on the wing and uh, I know she was really really good for Barcelona on their their quest to their title uh, scoring goals and the semis and stuff like that uh, and then she you know she like decided to leave and I wonder just I wonder what made her and Jackie want to come to France and want to come to Paris you know it makes me wonder like what it what attracted them to that to that team you know and um I thank them because uh, it's, it, PSG needed needed need some reinforcements, right? They needed some reinforcement. Maybe it was, um, you know, Van der Dank was there. She's in the Netherlands, so you know, uh, trying to figure out who else is in the Netherlands. That's I mean, who else is in France? And also, I guess you would look at um, what positions they play. Um, Martins and Jackie, what positions they played and what teams were. What, what teams needed that position that they played and were they going to get minutes and they, of course they won a Champions League and stuff like that so a lot of things go into um, the, the players decision to change teams and we are growing in the when it comes to whether ladies can play it is growing you know it will only grow as the game grows uh, so they won't just have we want to see no more will we see everyone go to Lyon, right? We try, we're trying not to see that. Um, right now, I think there's a couple teams that are the players are heavily fixated on. Right now, I would say Arsenal and Barcelona are heavy fixations on a lot of these players. Um, at the current moment. Especially with the injuries for Arsenal, Arsenal definitely may want to make sure they can build a good Champions League team. But um, to me, um, right now it's Barcelona, Arsenal, Lyon, Wolfsburg, or Bayern Munich. You know, I feel United are pretty popular united um, real madrid psg we got about a good 10 10 to 12 teams that i think the ladies have an option uh to go to um and and, and compete at a high level um it, it, but here's the thing like i said like i told you again if you go to if you go to spain and if you don't go to barcelona or if you do go to barcelona or if you go to France and you go to Lyon, or if you don't go to Lyon, it's all about how you play because your team is dominant. <laughs> your team is dominant. Your team is dominant. Uh, you know. And also, I, when I think about um, Jackie and, and Martins, that was the first season at Paris, so I feel uh, they still have to get adjusted, and some people adjust quicker than others, and so you have to give them that that space to grow. Because I know that when I go into new environments um, that I'm unfamiliar with, I it, I may need some time to adapt. And we, if you're a footballer, you would want to adapt more quickly than the latter. But sometimes it does take a little bit of adjusting in a new country, a new language, a new playing style, new coach, new new teammates. It takes a, a little bit more than and we always want people to be like, oh, you should be already you should already be gelling. You should already be gelling. And it was funny too, someone had left a comment on one of my Houston Dash matches, and I didn't get it until like a little later. He said it, you can see that they don't like each other, and I was like, hmm. I was like, do do this. I was like, do the dash players not like each other? I was like, or maybe they just need some more time together. But you know, you would hope that the not listen. You may not like all your teammates. Do you like all your coworkers? I know 
I didn't like all my co-workers. And we even know that a lot of some of these players, based upon their federations, they don't even like their manager. Um, so that is another thing. But that was something that it was brought to my attention because not everyone, um, I'm saying not everyone, um, maybe happy with each other. You know, you're, you're the new girl, you know, uh, and you're trying to take my position, right? And you're trying to take my spot to play and, uh, stuff like that. But, um, I hope the Dash players enjoy, you know, they like each other. It just takes some time to grow, um, and understand each other a little bit. And then sometimes it just, it's just not it. It's just not going to work. And whoever's in charge has to be able to identify that this is not going to work. You know, this, they, they don't have that chemistry together. They're too different, you know. And that's another thing that hurts when it comes to these nationalities. That doesn't, these nationalities are illusion. Belgium doesn't really exist. Netherlands doesn't exist. They're just a country named that. Um, and based upon how I observe the world, uh, but when it comes to football competition, the, when it comes to how they have built the world, your nationality means so much. But we're, for football purposes, um, we go along with it, right? Or for a lot of things, we go along with lives, right? Like, <laughs> anyway, uh, so that that doesn't help, uh, I guess, chemistry when it comes to football. Sometimes the uh, like you never been around this type of player before because you've never been exposed to this type of person or these types of people so that does challenge teams domestically and it does make sense why you see a lot of or similar nations are similar like you know you have a French manager you may attract more French players you have a Swedish manager you may attract more Swedish players because they want they want to be around people that they understand like you're Swedish, I'm Swedish. So that does hurt in ways a, a team domestically because of that illusion of, well, what if I don't understand? There's that barrier, right? But football brings us together, right? So it is a yin and a yang, and we always have to be aware of that. But we always have to be aware that that's an illusion, that just because you're from another country uh, doesn't mean that, um, you know, you can't not get to know me take my nationality out of it get to know me as a person uh, but anyways Netherlands are up 3-0 against Belgium they're gonna um, you know be wanting uh, let me fast forward here I don't know I wish they were speaking in English but uh, <laughs> that ain't gonna happen so let me just uh, uh, they're gonna show they might okay they're gonna show us some highlights let's go ahead and watch some of these highlights that they that they identified which is always important martin's here she had the first goal yeah this was the ball back it was similar position where berenstein scored but on the dunk gives it to martin's here inside the box Just late from number four uh, i wish i knew what they were saying <laughs> Do they got they got they got subtitles? They got Brit they got no. <laughs> no Dutch subtitles, unfortunately. Berenstein here getting out wide. This was the handball, right? I really wasn't too sure. Um, I really wasn't too sure. Um, like where the handball was, to be honest. Because I really didn't see any players react and respond. Like, oh, you know, because usually we see them do that. and It was tough to see. Uh, but and it, the penalty was missed, regardless. Um, and she has a long last name. <laughs> you see that? You see her last name? <laughs> That's how the Dutch get down. And I wonder if these are former footballers or they're just um, analysts. Because of course I don't I don't recognize them because I'm not I'm not well established, well based in their uh, part of the region. Um, this is the aanleiding. Nou ja, die was ook vrij 
natuurlijk. Heerlijk, altijd zo'n glietje. Ja. Uh, het is licht contact, ziet het, uh, ziet het eruit, maar deze zijn wel, wel smerig, hè? Ja, ik denk dat uh, wanneer de aftrap is, uh, komen het WK, dat ze het nog steeds kunnen. Ja, uh... Wow, she has 216 appearances, 44 goals. It's a lot of caps for her. And just like I was telling you when it comes to America and how many players that they have capped like that, um, I think the Netherlands probably match them based upon the players that they have brought up to the to the roster, brought up to the camp. Um, nine, 91 international appearances, 25 goals. She may be hitting her prime right now, Berenstein, to be honest. Uh, and like I said, with Mita Magan, um, someone needs to... Someone will step up, and it, it looks like it's going to be a um, a full fledged. I think they have a lot of options. Um, Netherlands to 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 help with that uh, vacancy of Miedema. So I think they'll be all right. I think they're going to be all right. I'm not just saying this because I have players that I'm supporting. I just, based upon what I see, I mean, I think they'll be all right. They were already a, a great team before I tuned into them. They were Euro champions, you know? I didn't even watch them. I didn't know anything about the Netherlands until they faced America, you know? I didn't know nothing about them. All right, well, let me go ahead and then, uh... Pass. <laughs> well, it looks like um, they're gonna hit, they're gonna come back to uh, <laughs> there is a Dutch TV series though that I did watch. What is it called? Um, yeah, there was a Dutch series. What is it called, man? It was like Black Widow, but it wasn't like Black Widow. Um, but it was, um, okay, so we have some subs. Number nine, snow, snow, no, number 15, number nine, number 15. Okay, for Van de Gert and Berenstein, okay. All right, so these are the players. These are the players that get called off off the bench after going up three goals. Okay, so we got a striker and we got a defender coming in. So let's see how they play and how Berenstein was very influential in the first half. So we'll see how um, the striker combines, the new striker combines with uh, the forwards and then the center back. Um, we'll see how they do. And hopefully, not Netherlands, Belgium can, you know, figure something out, you know. Can they get a goal? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it's going to take a lot. I mean, not it anyway it's gonna take something different right so we'll see if they can figure that out in the 45 uh. hmm. Dat ook, maar dan voorin op precies dezelfde plek als die van Berenstein in de eerste helft. En um, let me see. Women's World Cup, real quick. Oké. Okay. Um, Netherlands, what is this? See? Oh, they're giving us like a a preview, a match preview. That's cool. Okay, so the Netherlands, of course, they play Portugal on their first group. And they play them on the 23rd. And they play them at 2.30 in the morning where I am. Um... Their win probability, based upon the standings right now, is 65% Netherlands, 20% draw, and 15% Portugal to win. The last time it sees that Portugal and Netherlands played uh, was July um, 
13th and the European Women's Championship so the, the it was 3-2 so Van de Donk, Van de Grunt and Aguilero Aguilera they all scored um, and Costa and Silva scored here hmm. So, 3-2, that was the last time they played. <laughs> the double team here, good consistent, good consistent pressure there, getting the ball out. Okay, good, good from the width. It's blocked though. Co and a corner throw in. Belgium trying to take players down again. <laughs> she kind of get, runs into the shoulder. Oh, Joe was trying to lay it off to Jackie there. All the way falls to Victoria. Inside the box, she's facing up. She's taking it, it very deep inside the box. Needs better. Belgium need to. You can't allow a full. Well, she plays as a fullback. It looks like, or maybe even a deeper midfielder. Uh, if you're Belgium, someone needs to get on her. She's a quote unquote playing as a defender, but she's a striker, right? So that's tough too, because that's another thing. You know, we have the, a lot of these players are just in general. A lot of the ladies are more versatile. Like we're, it's crazy how you're a striker for one team and you're a defender for the other team. Uh, how do they do it? I have no idea. Um, but um, they get it done, and it, it is it, in a way inspiring for people to to be adaptable. Uh, to know that look, if 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 you don't get to play that position. Um, are you willing and able to learn another position? Are you willing to grow in that position? And then, of course, be the best you can be to help the team be successful, and not only help the team, help yourself. And uh, you may you may come to find out that you actually love that position or you hate it. So I guess it's really the, the player's perspective. But Van der here clearly gets the shirt pulled. No intention for the ball. Clearly a yellow card. She was caught in the midfield. All right, got a free kick. I don't know. She think she's going for goal. Looks like she's got the power for it. Yeah, she went for goal. Always sailing though. She's got a goal already though with the penalty. So. She's the captain. I said they had a, she had two hundred and sixteen caps. She's in the two hundreds. And when you think about it, I'll have to look to see who's not one second. Who's the most capped for these national teams coming through? Because at the moment, because of the youth, I feel the influx of the youth. It's gonna be very hard for. I'm not really hard unless you start young, like unless you're like a part of the team when you be, when you turn like 16, 17. Like some of these players probably, 
you may reach those not those amount of caps but i feel like you, then you will become we, we we see a lot of the players now that have these cups are like damn you've been in the game for a long time national team wise um but like i said with the the, the changes in the teams and the teams now being more open to seeing more of the youth and what the youth has and especially if you're a country that needs it you're like we have all these a little bit older ladies but we have the youth i feel like italy will in my opinion be the example like i'm really excited i didn't first of all i didn't think italy were in the fucking world cup because i swear i heard on the radio that they're not but italy i'm just like sure, let me make sure i'm pretty sure they're in the world cup right italy and i'm really looking forward to watching them because okay I've, i tuned into italy and i've very i've criticized them based upon i feel like they just play slow i'm like y'all play slow you just and based upon what i have seen with juventus oh this is a good little one too man netherlands hungry man they you see them hunting in packs um let me see italy so italy looks like who do they open up against So Italy open up their campaign against, or well, Italy play on Monday the 24th, and they play Argentina at 1 in the morning, where I am. I think this should be a good match. Um, I feel Italy have a lot to, their their league became fully, fully um, professional, so that's another exciting thing. And um, the fact that I, I just saw the glimpse of three of the players that were, I think, 16, 17, and 15, or 15, 16, 17, I don't know, something like that. I may have said it the same thing, just I may have said the same thing, but in different. But they got some young ladies, right? And I know America has, we have Sophie, uh, not Sophie, uh, yeah, well, Smith, she's, I think she's 19. They got Thompson, I think she's 18. Rodman, probably like. But they're younger. The Italian, well, the players are a little bit younger than them, right? They're like Olivia's. The Olivia's of what we have in Indivisio. But they're Italian. <laughs> so, that they are the future, right? For Italy, in my opinion. Their first World Cup, right? And I really hope they have a great experience here. Um, I really hope they're able to show us um, a look inside of what the next generation of ballers is. Um, because I feel be, this tournament, because we were talking about caps when we saw Spites caps, we're talking about caps, like 216 caps. It's going to be, you're going to be a legendary player going forward if you have that many caps, in my opinion, based upon what it looks like they have, they're going to start to have a lot of these tournaments. It's like we're having major tournaments, like back to back to back to back to back to back to back and it's like doesn't stop you know and they're having domestic matches uh and then if their country hosts like like a she believes cup or something like that um that's more caps right so it's like that's a lot of football for the ladies so to get to that many caps it may be quick but we may see slim we may not see that many players so i think i mean it, i don't know is it okay i mean do we how many caps do you need to have to go down as a, a legend in your uh, for your team or is it about what you have done with the caps that you've had right in my opinion right isn't it about that because I feel like back in the day it was more about man you you've capped this many times you've you've been you know I feel now it's about what have you done in that cap space um what have you how have you helped the team I feel that is something we sh should be aware of going forward um but then again like i said hopefully it also attributes you have a lot of caps that means you're a very good player you're able to keep the discipline you're able to be healthy and prepared for the game and and like i said hopefully also you're also through that cap in that cap space you have helped your team be become very successful you know there's Minima. she's in the building uh, do you rather be on the football pitch? I'd rather see Miedema on the football pitch. When I was telling y'all, I was, um, when I played, because uh, 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 of course, you know, the ladies are in FIFA now. Um, 
when I played a USA and the Netherlands, Amina scored a hat trick in the first half on me. She's, I think, she, one of the high, one of the highest rated strikers in the game. But just in the game, she's really good. Like it's crazy in the game, the video game. Ooh, this is a good header. Martins? No, this is who is just Van der Donk. She's little, but mighty. You know, Van der Donk is definitely one of those players. She, it's like her. Let me tell you about some of these players that have similar attributes. Van der Donk, I feel Rasso, Haley Rasso, uh, Katie McCabe. They're very small, little small players, but they make a big impact for their teams. I feel. Um, and uh, mighty, they say tiny but mighty. Or they say tiny but mighty. I, I don't know if they're even over five five, but they're tiny but mighty players. And uh, those are those are some players you're like, yo, you're. you're uh, I, like I said, I didn't. I the dog. I really didn't. Um, yeah, I watched Arsenal a little bit here and there, and of course, as I continue to understand how I want to see football a little better. Uh, you appreciate players that play like Van der Donk, you know, and she's, when you think about um, what type of player she is, she's a little, of course, she's a little smaller than Jackie, uh, but definitely a physical player. She's a Leo, too, so she has that lioness energy. She's fearless. Uh, so, you, for me, um, I'm not saying we don't really see those. We don't really see the Von der Dunk players or like the Haley Russell players or the Katie McCabe players anymore. But um, definitely an interesting and a different type of player that uh, I would say just an interesting and a different type of player that um, you can identify. You know, you can, they bring something different to the team. Tiny but mighty, you know. <laughs> oh. But um, it's it's uh, nowadays now, it's so awesome to be able to talk more about the players, and different players, uh, based upon just me, like my football journey and what I've had, what I have witnessed, uh, watching some of these players play. And um, it just feels, it's, it's, it's really nice because um, that just shows you like how the game is growing, you know. There, there are um, quality players all over the field, all over the country, all over the world uh, when it comes to this game. And uh, you just want them to uh, perform their best when the when majority of the world is tuning in. We tune, a lot of us people will tune into them domestically, but a lot of the world won't do that. They'll tune into them internationally when they ha when it's on the biggest, one of the biggest stage where all the, the reason why it's the biggest stage is because more people are like, oh yeah, we know about the World Cup. Everyone, we know about the Olympics, but you may not know about their league, you know? Uh, so that is why it's so important for the ladies to tell the rest of the world we already know that they're quality but to show the rest of the world like look this is what we we, we do this we do this and it's not just one it's a collective right and um, it is so awesome to see you know it's so awesome to see especially for me like I didn't like based upon me just um, watching a lot of football matches a lot I know a lot more players a lot more players um, and um, it just it just feels good to know more players know more there's a little bit of their stories a little bit maybe not their stories but just just um, it just it just feels good to know I feel to have a it feels good to um, to be, I guess, in a way, to, to just to feel a part, to be a part, to to feel, I guess, some type of uh, connection to the teams because I know them, 
because I know some of the players, you know, I just feel that connection that we feel to these teams, it feels good to know. And it's not just one. It's like I'm connected to a lot more. I'm connected to two or two or three more players. And to me, I mean, my connections are infinite when it comes to football. You know, we can know a lot of you watch England. A lot of us know their whole lineup. We know where they are, where they play um, in the USA. We know where they're at. We know where they play. The connection um, is... Uh, Ooh, Victoria here. She get a little piss pump for us. She's got a goal. She's been really lively too. Um, and we had seen her in the second half. I think she favored this matchup. I don't think Belgium had made any subs. But we've seen her already like, okay, you know what? She's been facing up. She wants, She's in the box. And this is probably why uh, Arsenal wanted to sign her. Um, you know, I don't know. Was she, could the defender have been better? I kind of went through her legs and she found that she's pretty quick. Um, but yeah, man, how many different goal scorers for the Netherlands right now? That's scary. You're looking USA. Did you, are you watching? USA, are you watching? Shout out to Victoria. You know that's where my grandma was from. Um, so she has um, a, a name that resonates with me. Um, uh, so she gets the 63rd minute goal here for the Netherlands. Uh, Mm. I mean, and Belgium played that bad? That's the thing. Have Belgium played this poor? That's tough. I think, I don't know. Did, 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 I'm, look, I'm trying to think about... I'm trying to think about the only thing I really can uh, give a reference to is I'm looking at in England and Portugal. I'm like... What? What's the difference between Belgium and Portugal? Portugal are going to the World Cup. And Belgium is not. Could that be the sole difference? They have a different mentality. And they know that their group is going to be tough if they want to get out. If they want to get out of the group, it's going to be tough for Portugal. And right now, remember, I only got, I want you to remember too, when you, if you watch my commentary with uh, USA and Wales, I guess I can look at that too. Is Belgium better than Wales? Is Belgium better than, um, are, are Wales better than uh, Portugal? We look at these teams, how, we, we have to compare the teams, Wales, Belgium, Portugal. Wales and Port Wales and Belgium are not going to the World Cup. Portugal is. So we take that into context. So like, okay. The, technically the only team that had to play a World Cup team was England. USA, you see they struggled with Wales based upon them not technically having that lineup for America is up in the air. I don't know what lineup America will start with. And based upon the people that came off the bench in the world in, in, in the Wales match, I feel like they did better. When I told you I like the combination with Williams, Smith, like and Rodman up top. But Blacko may play Smith and and Rodman and Morgan. He may bench Lynn Williams and have her come off the bench. Do you do that against Vietnam? Do you do you do that against the Netherlands? Who should be your starting eleven against the Netherlands? If you're America, if you're watching this match right now, and you're looking at this is the Netherlands starting eleven. This is clearly their starting eleven. Uh, they already made subs, but. The, the first team that we saw, I'm pretty sure, was they're going to be their starting 11. Um, I mean, they performed well. They, they look good. They look strong. Um, and I don't think, for me, I don't think, like, Belgium have played poor. They just, 
they just been, like I said, I feel they've been played like an instrument tonight. I feel they've been played like an instrument. Like, um... Belgium, I mean, Netherlands have moved the ball quick, very accurately. I haven't really seen that many arid passes, that pa arid passing in this match, you know. And so, and you think about that midfield for Belgium. I mean, when you think about that midfield for, um, I thought you should, well, Jackie was playing in England, that's right. Jackie was playing in England, she was playing for United. But of course, Jill and Van der Donk had played together for Arsenal. Um, and I'm trying to think, where was Martins before she played for Barcelona? Because I don't remember who Bar Martins was before Barcelona, you know? Well, I wasn't in tune into football like that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so uh, who, where were they before? <laughs> where have they played? I'm guessing somewhere in the Netherlands. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing, but... Uh... we got about uh, 30, min 30 minutes left here. Um, I'm trying to figure out what my favorite goal has been. Mm. I feel like all the goals have been pretty good. Uh, you know, of course, besides the penalty. The penalty is, you know, cool, calm, and collected. Yeah, but I think all the other goals, they had, like I said, you have three, four, four different goal scorers for Belgium. I mean, four different goal scorers for for uh netherlands and when i tune into um some of spain's matches uh we saw england portugal we saw usa um wells and whatever whoever matches i know france played republic of ireland if i can find some of the games on the internet based upon my observations and i've only watched like just three matches and technically i've only seen one two three teams that are going to the uh, World Cup. The Netherlands look the best out of the three that I've seen that are going to the World Cup. And it's crazy because we knew Germany lost to Zambia and both of those players, both of those teams are going to the World Cup. So you're like, you know, you're like, what? You got some subs for um, Bayern, uh, not Bayern, <laughs> Belgium. Right. Oh. Oh, it. And some subs for 19 and number 4 on the Newman or Jansen. Got one more player, number 21. Demilius, the uh, Leon, or Jill. Uh, you know, for me, Jill was kind of quiet. Um, I'm looking as a city perspective. She really didn't really need to do too much. She did have an opportunity. Like it wasn't like a clear, like clear shot. She she did was she got like one shot, but usually she was there, kind of just making sure the midfield stayed connected. Anytime the ball came to her, she would either pass it to Jackie or um, she was quiet, quiet, subtle. So you know, like I don't think this match needed um, maybe it, already we got Newman. I think Newman plays for Chelsea, but. Um, Jill, we didn't really, she didn't, I don't say didn't get to shine, but based upon the other players, like Van der Donk, Martins, Bernstein, now Victoria, she, 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 she was kind of in the background, if that makes sense. I think with City, she'll def, she'll, I believe she'll play a different role. Um, that's if the ladies and Taylor, they can figure out how they i don't even know what the starting lineup for city will be next year uh or this season anyways um because the signings could still come if we can get some more signings we'll see um because i'm not sure when the transfer season ends or 
for a lot of these countries or for the market so i'm pretty sure it's still active like right now and some players may make their make their announcement after the world cup sometimes it happens like that sometimes it's for before the world cup but we'll see what happens you know when it comes to the players and where they might want to go So with the subs and it being 4-0, um, and having 18 minutes left, mm, you know, of course, Belgium, um, hopefully they continue to still fight for something. But Netherlands, of course, try to keep a clean sheet. Uh, and, and like I said, Netherlands have played very, sometimes you would just say simple. They play very simple. Um, and they gotten the job done today, even though they missed. I think the only you would say the only downside was that they missed the penalty. One of the they missed the penalty, and that was probably the, the only thing that they were like, okay, we need to make sure when we are given opportunities to make them because against, as I say, a better oppositions, we may not get another penalty. We may not get another chance to go ahead. So I think probably that would be the only thing that the Netherlands um, would say would be on the downside, but everything else has to be on the positive. Um, different goal scorers. Everyone looks like everyone looks real good. And um, I think they're going to have a good tournament. Um, I think Netherlands are going to, I think now it makes sense why Jack, why um, not Jackie. Now it makes sense why Martin said what she said. Let me see if I can uh, read that, find that article for you real quick. Um, and so apparently Martin's went out during the Euros too. Interesting. It's tough. Anyways, so they had some injuries. Uh, it says, uh, this is via The Guardian. Uh, uh, Netherlands, Martins insist Netherlands are back and can win a Women's World Cup. You know? Um, ne Martin says that the Netherlands have their sights on winning a first Women's World Cup as they prepare to take the third... As, as, they, as they prepare to take... <laughs> as they prepare take um as they prepare to make her i guess what the fuck kind of words are these i guess i would say as they prepare to take to make their third place um their third appearance in the world cup right it says martin's is 30 i can't believe it uh the 30 year old uh paris saint germain player part of the dutch side uh finished in runner-ups in 2019 2-0 she says um i like uh, whoa, cause, see, can you see this? Oh, so bright. Let's see. Got some more subs. We all see what Lynn Williams says. Lynn Williams. People put athletes on pedestals. What? I'm sorry. Lynn Williams says people put athletes on pedestals sometimes, but we're just humans. And that's something we always have to remember. Um, when they wake up, they probably wake up just like us. They have to open their eyes and, 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 and get up out of bed. And um, maybe you have to use the bathroom, depending on how, what happens. Uh, sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Look, look, you may have to go to the bathroom as soon as you wake up. Sometimes it happens like they're like, oh my goodness, I have to go back. But they all refocus my camera. They all have to do, I mean, like Lynn Williams said, she's a Gemini, so, you know, that's not, I'm not surprised that Jimmy said that, you know, but Lynn Williams, um, we're now in the time, in the era of, we will no longer be worshipping anybody outside of ourselves. Um, and that even comes to the players that we admire on the football pitch. Um, 
allow these players to inspire you to continue to be or continue to work for what you want um, to chase your dreams or not to chase to follow your dreams follow your inner calling um, these players it's not their job to do anything they're like, like it's not their job to do anything they're like listen I'm following my dreams this is what I want to do I'm following my dreams and when you see people following their dreams that should inspire you to like what are my dreams what, what, what do I want to do with my life and because of the system that we have been put in in the program that we have put in Lynn Williams is correct people put athletes on pedestals and um, we should never put anyone outside ourselves on anything <laughs> on anything on a pedestal on a high horse on whatever you we all have to humble humble ourselves and understand that we are here together to help each other inspire each other to become of course the greatest versions of ourselves and so of course based upon a lot, I, I get like I said, I, I get inspired seeing the players' stories. I get inspired seeing them score. Get, the players inspire me as a, and, and as a collective. It's inspiring to see the game grow for the ladies. That's inspiring. She's like, so that gives people like me opportunities to grow too, as I grow, as they're growing. Uh, the game is growing, becoming more global. In a way, people that are interested in football. They may come to me. They may be attracted to what I do. So even I, you don't put anybody on a pedestal because that is not how we. That is not how you're supposed to be living reality. That's not how you're supposed to be living your life. Um, you can admire them. You can be inspired by them. You can be motivated by them. But we must stop the ideology of or in a way even living through them as they say what do they call that i don't know what the fuck they call it. living through these players live your life you know what i'm saying and i was thinking i got football jerseys that say my name i got football jerseys that say my name i need to fly high i have football jerseys that say my name i don't have i have one football jersey that says one i have two jerseys that say two people's last names but the uh, the rest, which is only two, have are my name, right? Because I didn't. Yeah, it's great to buy your favorite football, your favorite footballer's jersey. Help them, because you you care about them. But when I think about the things that I do, I don't know if I can run. I don't know if I would want to sign up to run around for ninety minutes and do. And I know it's not like that, but I don't know if I would want to play football professionally. Like. You think about what they have to do every day to just become, just to be good at what they do, their sport. Like, that's a lot. I don't know if I'm about that life. You know what I mean? I don't know if I would chose to do that. Yeah, they they got to do a lot. And then, like I said, everything else that's involved with the women's game, the goods and the bads, mm, I don't know if I could. Listen. Some of us don't even like our jobs, right? So, you know what I'm saying? I, I mean, like, I don't, anyways, I don't have, anyways, I remember when I worked, um, it's good, that's a good touch this year from the fullback, she, sca she scampers really quickly. Oh, man, Martin's put it in a great position for someone. Um, but yeah, we are, we are leaving that era of, um, illusion, of, uh, worshiping people outside of ourselves right and most people i mean it you have to realize you can't go on living your life like that um because uh, it's only at your in a way only at your detriment um because you're putting your attention on people that you don't like i come across articles i'm uh, not articles some um, you know i watch people on youtube and that make pe make videos about that are that are awakened and that understand how the world works that understand how athletes get used um, to based upon um, to harness to harvest energy from the collective but um 
he was saying that we don't we won't I, I don't know we don't these people are not in our lives right these people are not in our lives so like they're not even in our lives like that we'll, we can only take the inspiration the motivation because in a way I'm not saying they're role models they're 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 following their dreams so they're like okay and if they are role models what can you see that they're doing they're following their dreams so try to f follow that role follow your dreams when you look at some of these players you're like okay and, and um and and that's oh that hit the post you <laughs> they had two the two players here were wanting that one anyone who got it though that's tough yeah i would have probably like oh man i was so close to swarm or cool but yeah all smiles five zero mm. netherlands yo i got it oh shit netherlands okay they they doing things here against belgium though remember okay no not world cup bound newman gets up there we got uh number nine good cross i believe that was victoria here Martins was available too. She kind of stuck back. Oh no, this is number 19. Okay. Sub. Captain. Captain. And number 22. Oh, that, that little burst of little pace that we saw her to get past that player. It was simple. But it should be, it should be something we should identify. Um, and it was just that one play. Really haven't seen too much. I was saying no. We haven't really. I mean, way we haven't really. She hasn't needed to be on the ball. Defensively, she really hasn't had that much defensive problems. Uh, but that that little glimpse of just her ability to move past the player that was attacking her showed me uh, good signs of confidence. The, she has the ability to get forward. Uh, number twenty-two for the Netherlands. But uh, number nine, I believe, got the goal. What is it? The 80, 83rd, 80, 83rd minute, number nine. Um, what's her name? Uh, Snowdus. I don't even know how to pronounce that. She gets the goal. Five zero Netherlands man. Als Renate Jans inmiddels hoopt dat de bal well, back on the article with Miss Martins, um, she says, "Yes, I do dream about that." Martin said on winning the the uh, World Cup, and uh, I think it's a very good that you keep trying to make that dream a reality. If we were to win, it would be complete. I would have won everything that I ever dreamt of winning. It will be a tough challenge, but nothing is impossible. I'm going to give it everything I can as I'm going to give it everything I can to be as prepared as I can be. I also trust in this team. I just hope we can get into the flow. Martins, who has won three successive league titles and Champions League during her time at Barcelona, helped her country win the European Championship in 2017. She was voted player of the tournament and was named UEFA player of the year. Since that win, uh, expectations of Dutch have increased, and Martin said. Dealing with the growing pressure was an adjustment, but she believes in her side, can thrive and embrace the challenge. The Netherlands are ninth in FIFA World Rankings. So suddenly after the win, suddenly after the Euro win, as Martins comes off, People expect a lot from us. I think we dealt with that well as a team. We have s slowly grown into it, and we are still dealing with it. People expect us to always be able to battle for the prize, and we have given ourselves that standard. The character in the team is back, and maybe we can achieve something beautiful again at this World Cup. So... I love that. You know, I like what she said right here. She says, we have given ourselves that standard um, because they won the uh, the Euros, you know. And just like England, have England, that match against Portugal wasn't the England. And they need, they're going to have to grow into that standard too. Netherlands, um, 
of course, they've had a little bit more time from their 2017 win, from their 2019 runner-up um, uh, World Cup. They've had more time to grow. So um, I like that that statement that she said. Um, it takes teams to grow into like, oh yeah, this is who we are now. It takes some time to um, identify like, look, not only do we have the belief in the country, uh, the, the country believes that we could be successful. Um, we believe in ourselves that we could be successful. Um, and um, it just takes some time a little bit. I think England are in that process for sure, for sure. No pressure to England. Um, they're going to have to grow. They have the quality, but they now, England will have to find consistency. As you consistency. And I know this is only one match that I'm seeing with uh, the Netherlands and and it gets Belgium, but um, you look at the players they have, you look at this match, um, and you you see um, you see now why they were Euro champions, you see why now they were um, runner up in the World Cup, even with now missing their best striker, one of their best strikers, some would say Mino. Um, so. I believe in the Netherlands, and I'm, I'm always, now that I'm, well, I'm always here for a new champion, a new winner. I love to see new people win. I love to see new people get their flowers, in a way, because in the, the world that they have created, it was always just a certain type of people that have won but now in this new world that we're creating everyone is given the best that they can equal equal opportunity to go out and win and um especially in women's football and now so it, it is um netherlands definitely gonna be i would say they i don't think they were favorites going in um based upon you know their injuries and um, I didn't really think about them being favorites, um, even prior commentaries. But like I said, watching them play, watching America play, watching England play, right now they are favorites. One of the favorites, in my opinion. And it's all about how you see the game. What do you think teams need? Uh, what do you think... Um, I was going to say, what, what, I don't know, what, what qualities do you think is needed for a World Cup winning team? Uh, there you go, that's what I going to say. But yeah, I uh, still got uh, a couple more teams to tune into when it comes to, um, a couple more, because we still have seven days away from the World Cup, but I still have a couple more teams I can tune into to see how they're doing. Um, to read to read their energy right uh, but um Netherlands I'm impressed I'm, I'm very impressed I'm very impressed um, like I said they the, the, the teams can only as they say they can only play who's in front of them right and do your best uh, so I think I think I might tune into um I think I saw Spain, Vietnam, or Spain, Denmark. Uh, so I may. It's definitely going to be Spain next for sure. Uh, based upon, it looks like um, some of their top ladies are back. And they will need them to win a World Cup. They can't not have some of these players that we saw with Barcelona not be there to, to, to be successful. I, I didn't. I don't. There was no way Spain was going to win. A World Cup without those players uh, that we saw on that list a little earlier in the year, um, and I'm ha I am and people we'll talk about Spain when we talk about Spain when we watch Spain, you know what I'm saying? But I will have to see how they play too, and um, see how they're doing out there, cause um, it's tough having drama going into a major tournament with your federation, you know. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to experience something like that. Um, and they're they're just one example. Canada have 
and hopefully Canada don't go don't go bankrupt during the World Cup. You know what I mean? Like it's crazy. You know it is crazy the times we live in. But um, um, that just means um. Well, I don't know what what does that mean to you, huh? What does that mean to you? It's all about your perception of your reality. We have one more minute. I want to thank y'all for watching. Uh, of course, make sure you go follow me on YouTube, Anita's Joint. I'm pretty sure. Um, I don't want to say. I don't want to put that out there, but. A lot of well, a lot of the matches, uh, oh, the, the World Cup will probably. I don't think I don't know if I'm gonna be able to put them on YouTube, but for sure we'll go live here on Twitch. Um, I think everything should work fine here on Twitch, but it may not be able to put them on YouTube. Uh, so I think I'll probably I might try to upload them uh, on the Twitch page so they'll be here because, of course, it's all about um, documenting. Now, I do commentaries, um, and these are, like I said, these are like my diaries. So these are my observation of the women's game. Me observing the women's game. Me observing myself commentating the women's game. Um, but that's the final whistle. 5-0. A handful of goals, pun intended. A handful of goals for the Netherlands. Uh, five different goal scorers. I mean, they couldn't ask for anything better. Yes, against Belgium, but if this is your send-off match in front of your home crowd, and a, and a, and I like the Netherlands vibe, like I said, they got their okay first. Netherlands won when you can go to their country and buy legalized ganja. That's that's successful. So you you already know the Netherlands are on a, diff, a different type of frequency. You go out there. You can buy marijuana, okay? I now know that's not the incentive to go to the Netherlands to buy marijuana, but it could be incentive. I would go to the Netherlands and find marijuana. I'd go there and smoke marijuana and also watch football because, as you see, if you watch this game with me, they're pretty good. Um, and then, of course, their league, I bet it's popping, and, you know, I have to tune into them a little bit more. But, um... Uh... Netherlands are lionesses as well. So if you're looking for another lioness team, you know, and orange, uh, Houston Dash, Houston Dash are the only other football team that are orange. So there is a connection. And of course, Jackie and Martins are part of the PSG family. And now uh, we saw Jill and of course, Kirsten are part of the citizen family in my home. Uh, so uh, it's always nice to have family members on the pitch you know, real shit you know because <laughs> you know, we are a football family literally well anyways y'all thank y'all for tuning in to anita's joint hashtag extended joint where every day is payday baby it's your girl anita flying high flying out of this third dimensional reality and i'm gonna see you on the next one okay deuces